you guys grow your cloud service revenues? Well, what we're going to talk about next is uh, one of the most precious commodities, apparently, which is IT business continuity. Um, you have that. You can drive growth in backup as a service, disaster recovery as a service. Um, and it opens opportunities for you guys to offer more services to grow your customer base and to reduce churn. Uh, so we have a presentation now focusing on the market drivers, the business case, and the technology that make these cloud solutions attractive. This guy was the chief architect of Parallels. He's the CEO of Acronis. Please welcome Sergei Belusov. Uh, hello, I'm glad to be here. I just realized it's uh, my 11th time to web hosting day. So I, it's, it's an 11th web hosting day. And it's 11th time, I believe, I'm giving a speech. I'm not sure whether I have skipped any. And so I wanted to start with a little bit of history. Imagine that I do have history in this market. I, we started building software for hosters uh, in the year 2000. Um, and, and that was 15 years ago. It was actually about exactly 15 years ago when we spoke to a first hoster. Uh, today, Parallels is a global leader in um, uh, hosting and cloud services enablement. Uh, it has about 1,050 people, several hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, and over 10,000 cloud providers. Uh, and, and actually, Acronis, interestingly enough, was at some point a part of uh, uh, Parallels, was split it off in 2003. And I was not uh, uh, looking after it after 2007 at all. Now, in 2010, I've hired my replacement. I believe he's speaking later today, uh, at least once, Birger Steen. Um, and you know, I, I suggest that you watch it, his speech. He will be giving very exciting announcements. And I wanted to sort of go into the mode of active retirement. And I started a fund, Rune Capital. But even in that fund, I was not able to escape hosters. And so the best investments in that fund are the companies which are actually very active in a hosting and a cloud space, companies like Nginx. Who of you guys know Nginx? Right, OK. Gelastic, Cloud Linux, Mighty Call, Volarm, Anturis, MariaDB, which is going to replace MySQL. Uh, I'm pretty sure at the moment it's already 20% of the base and equity. And I just realized in my personal portfolio, I also have Open Exchange. So everything's related to hosting. But in 2013, I came back to Acronis. And Acronis, at that point, was a good company making backup. Acronis True Image, Acronis Backup. Any of you Acronis True Image customers here? No customers. I mean, come on, guys, from Acronis. You are the customers. Uh, and um, it's about the same size as Parallel, slightly smaller, much more profitable. But in 2013, when I came back, there was no cloud strategy. Uh, cloud revenue was basically revenue, basically zero. So, <clears throat> well. Why did I come back? One of the reasons I came back is because first I initially thought that uh, backup is not important. But then uh, in, in my investment days, I realized a number of things about technology. For example, some wonderful facts that according to modern physics, the world is a quantum computer. Energy is hardware. Laws of physics are software. And everything we have is a quantum data. Now, the quantum data is everything in the world, but the interesting feature of quantum data, which enables a lot of sense about quantum technologies, is that it cannot be copied. If you copy it, it's destroyed. The good thing about digital data is that it can be copied without changing anything. But it is, uh, it's a good thing because you can actually keep a copy, and if something happens with your data, you can restore it, you can restore your system if you keep all the data about the system, and so on and so forth. But it's also something weird about the data because if you can copy something, somebody else can copy something. And so that somebody else can be a bad guy or can be a guy who you don't want to have your information. Data loss happens. It happens to all of us. And it's not a question when it happens. It's only a question, not a question if it happens. It's only a question when. And this is all some of the examples of how it happens. Hackers force reveal, software failure, hardware failure, natural disaster. Believe me or not, natural disasters happen all over the world. Uh, uh, they happen in Japan. This is uh, tsunamis and earthquakes. They happen in Germany. This is floods. Uh, they happen in uh, New York. They have uh, tornadoes almost and, and hurricanes. Um, and you know, there, there is actually one thing which I wanted to point out about data loss is that typically people think about data 
uh, protection in terms of data safety. And data safety is if any of those things uh, on, on the right happen, then you can restore your data and, and, or you can restore your system and, and you have no problem. However, that was true in the days of the uh, before the cloud, because the data was behind the corporate firewall and was in your possession. In the modern connected world, uh, it's very, very different. The data is everywhere, and, and so you need to worry about data security, because um, uh, the bad guys can penetrate your devices and, and can actually get access to data, even though you have device security. And most importantly, and that was actually sounding very much today and will sound more in the future, the most hot topic today is data privacy. Once you put your data on a device which is connected, you technically lose privacy. Once you put your data on Dropbox, you technically lose privacy. You, once you put your data to Google, you technically lose privacy. And, and so that's another form of data protection you need to worry about. And when data is lost, it's, it's very bad. Most of the time, it's about lost time. Uh, and lost time is um, you know, very bad because everything we have in life is time and not so much of it. This is a simple calculation, 600,000 hours in one human life, approximately, in the world, 100 to 200,000 are productive hours. So 10 hours for 100 million users, and we certainly hope that we will have a billion users uh, at some point in Acronis, uh, is 5,000 to 10,000 uh, lives sold, lost. However, people much more afraid, typically, not about losing time, because it's, it's an illusion which is given to us by our basic instinct that time is unlimited, and they are worried about losing money, losing power, losing glory, and with um, the losing data, nothing of that can be gained. You lose money, you lose power. You can gain fame, but it will not be a good fame because people will know information about you you didn't want them to know. Now, well, there are things which people are ready to die for and ready to actually do very complicated things and ready to pay. Uh, and and uh, they, they uh, are ready to take just a piece of it, such as love. Right? So there's so much written about love. Well, unfortunately, data protection is not one of those things. And, and you know, I love to give an example of uh, brushing the tooth. Imagine if in order to brush your tooth, you need to stand on your head. Uh, there will be many less people who will brush the tooth. And at least they will brush it perhaps more rarely. And so data protection equally needs to be easy and it, for the user, for the administrator or provider. And it needs to be fast and seamless because anything which is long is not easy. Now, imagine if, if you can only brush uh, one tooth or two tooth, and the rest of your mouse will not be possible to protect, or you will only be able to take care of certain problems and not other problems. That would not be also very interesting for, for, uh, for tooth protection. And, and the same thing for data protection. In order for it to be universally useful, it needs to be complete. So it needs to work for all types of data. It needs to work, uh, support a variety of different things you need to do with data. And, and most importantly, it's not just about backup. It's also about disaster recovery. It's also about secure access, archiving, storage, and more. And finally, it needs to be cheap. Imagine if protecting your teeth will cost 5,000 euro a month. I believe many less people will protect their teeth. 500 euro per month? Hmm, still many less. OK, 100 euro per month on the average. That would make a wide audience. Believe me, today in the world, most of people do not protect their teeth because actually even 50 euro per month is too much for a lot of people who live in this world. And same with data protection. Now, I wanted to step back a little and talk about cloud. And for a while, people talk about cloud is great, uh, but cloud is also dead and also everything is cloud. What is the real benefit of cloud? The real benefit of cloud is really just three things. It's a cloud architecture which is uh, simply enabling network effect. Cloud makes everything connected, every device, every person, every vendor, and they can all participate in creating complete experience. It's web services, which are actually a result of everything being connected in, in, in software. It enables very fast integration of different services. Everything which has a cloud architecture is ready to integrate with something else. And it's about scaling out. It's effectively a you know, extrapolated version of the Moore law. Everything in the cloud is built to scale out, so there is no limit to scalability, not to scale up like with a mainframe. Interestingly enough, before cloud, when you scale up, every new user will be more expensive. So the systems like mainframes will be more expensive per, for users than the commodity servers. Now in the cloud, as you scale out, 
your, your every user has become cheaper and performance becomes better. It's principally different architecture. And I would argue that's exactly what, for the first time, makes it possible for data protection to be easy, offered as a service, maintained by somebody else. You just install the agent on your device, makes it complete, support a variety of workloads, and support a variety of scenarios, and makes it cheap. Because again, it, it enables it is enabled by the cloud architecture. And that's what actually makes cloud storage such a huge opportunity. You can see here that cloud storage, according uh, to, to this data, uh, is going to grow to about $60 billion in 2019, in less than five years. And it's growing at approximately 33%. Now, next thing I wanted to talk about very quickly, what made Hoster successful. And, and you know, I just happen to know all these three companies, GoDaddy, one and one, and um, uh, Interginia for imagine as, as much as that at 12 years, even 13. And what made them successful is they made services, domain shared and server hosting, easy, complete, and cheap. In, in fact, those services were not so easy and were not so complete and were not so cheap before. But when they were made easy, complete, and cheap, they become available for everyone from consumer to small business to large business in the same fashion uh, and, and with upsell and cross sell. And I believe data protection is such next big scene for hosters. And most certainly, all of us know that the growth in the hosting industry is somewhat slower, and data protection can enable new growth. And that's why I came, came back, because I want to enable $30 billion of services to consumers and businesses for hosters with my software. So there is a big pie which we can split. $30 billion is not even all of the market, so another $30 billion can be given to somebody else. We are not greedy. 30 billion would be good. I think all, to, all together, the hosting market today uh, is uh, perhaps less than 15 billion. OK, well, uh, very quickly, what is Acronis? Again, hundreds of millions of license revenues, 650 employees, 330 top notch engineers, 30,000 partners, traditional partners, partners of Ingram, and so on. Uh, um, in 90 countries. In fact, last year we transacted in 153 countries, uh, and we have customers which are 300,000 businesses, 5 million consumers, over 160 OEMs. Products are available in 14 languages, and um, the only thing which was wrong about Acronis when I came back, besides having Fortune 500 customers and great products, is that we had almost no cloud revenue. And so in 2013, it was 0.5% of our revenue. Today, it's 25%. In fact, last year, our cloud revenue through partners grew 1,000%, uh, which is 10 times. Now, Acronis is not just backup. It is also disaster recovery. It is also secure access. It is also disk utilities. It is also cold storage for data, migration system deployment. And very soon, it is more. It is complete suit for data protection. And Acronis is built on a very advanced technology, which Acronis is developing for the past 15 years uh, and, and today, it's uh, 330 uh, engineers in, in, the, in, in the group which is developing this technology, which we call AnyData Engine. That's the engine behind all of the Acronis products. In, in general, for Acronis, 50% of headcount and 25% of revenue uh, is spent on R&D. Uh, we're doing business through partners. We're building our technology in such ways that it's convenient for partners to make money. When I came back, the first thing we did, we made cloud the first priority. So all of the 330 engineers of Acronis today are focused on developing cloud services first. Uh, disaster recovery as a service, backup as a service, Acronis Access Cloud. Cloud services become available as cloud solutions, which you can deploy. And then cloud solutions we release as on-premise products for a stubborn customers who don't want to use cloud services. And well, I wanted to talk about a um, couple of things. Um, you know, there is a limited time, but um, the, the, the point is that um, I, I think many of you try to sell backup as a service um, uh, in the past. And in order for you to be successful, the backup has to be uh, good enough. So it has to back up a variety of different workloads. Most of your customers have different, different workloads. Today, we support Zen, Windows, VMware, Hyper-V, Zen, KVM, uh, Active Directory, SQL Server, and many other workloads. In the future, we support everything which your customers possibly have. Um, it needs to be able to restore not just data, but it data in the right incremental way and also systems. It needs to be very fast upload. The upload speeds are improving, the, but still very slow today in, in many places, especially, in fact, in Europe. And it needs to be able to use any storage. It needs to ensure that your data is consistent. It needs to provide monitoring and auditing. 
it needs to do authentication. Most importantly for the hosters, it needs to be transparently integrated with your systems, with your business models. And that's what we can offer with Acronis. Our products have deep data protection technology, but we make them built for hosters specifically. Well, the next service, which is also available, it's a disaster recovery as a service. Uh, really? Uh, and um, it's a very interesting thing with disaster recovery. Before cloud, it was impossible to do proper disaster recovery. Because before cloud, in order for you to recover something, you have to have a re replacement hardware. And because installing the hardware is a manual procedure, you would also have to have a person. With the cloud, it, you don't have to have a replacement hardware, and it can be automated. Disaster recovery appliance is installed on the premise of the customer, and it enables running local recovery. Customer has Excel service uh, panel, and his data is replicated to the cloud, yours or somebody's. Full or partial copy of the client data center can be restored at any time without replacement hardware and connected through virtual network. And most important, customer can regularly test that his recovery works. And again, uh, you have to have the right product. We believe we have the best product. It got the highest rating uh, in, uh, by Forrester recently. Uh, I really encourage you to look at disaster recovery uh, as a service from Acronis. We announced it's available in Europe from French, German, and UK data centers of Acronis uh, today. Finally, uh, you know, uh, again, I'm running out of time, but uh, it, it is important to control access to data. And, and there is two scenarios which are popularized by services like Dropbox, like Share and, and Synchronize. Um, and, and, you know, when you do Share and Synchronize, of course, you also need to keep control. And with Dropbox, for example, that's going to be very challenging. And with Bog.net, it will be incomplete. But in fact, in order for you to really control access to your data, you need to uh, also enable access to all of the data, not just the one which you put in the cloud, but also the one which is in document management server, which is in a file server, which is on your PC, which is on your mobile device. You need to enable edit, collaboration, communication, and workflow on the data while keeping control. One thing to remember that you're dealing with devices which are sometimes offline, which are connected not to your network, and which are not even owned by your company. And again, it needs to be correct product, and we believe we have such product. When I back, came back to the company, it was only available as an on-premise software. Today, it's available uh, as a service as well. For the first time, we are announcing in WHD, you can ask for a demo at our booth. Finally, it is very important that uh, today we only have three solutions for you guys, but um, we are coming up with more solutions, archiving, uh, discovery as a service, storage as a service. And, and the point is that we need to offer a complete data protection. Any threat scenario, any workload, any policy for any customer enabling upsell and cross-sell. And that's what we want to be able to do for you, integrated with your systems and integrated with your business models. So how can you make money with Acronis products? There is uh, four models. One of them, you can resell our software to your customers. They can deploy and manage it in your data center. We uh, have SPLA program available. Another one, you can resell Acronis hosted products. Another one, you can actually deploy the storage in your data center, but use Acronis service to manage the backup. So the, the agents will be at your customer devices in your data center or off-premise. But the software will run from Acronis data center. In Europe, we have it in Germany, UK, and, and France. Uh, we also have data centers in Asia and in US. And finally, we make it possible for you to choose a business model. You can actually use our product as a solution and deploy it fully on premise in your data center and keep the storage in your data center and fully control your pro profit margins. And um, that, that's basically a very basic uh, business case. My presentation will be available online getting up to 5.5 thousand customers with 5.2 million euro in revenue and uh, 3.2 million euro in EBITDA. It's a relatively modest case. I'm proud to announce that this case is chosen by our customer HomePL, and they have uh, uh, five times more aggressive expectations. And so it's very simple. Data is more and more valuable. Data protection has to be easy, complete, and cheap. Cloud made it all possible. And hosters are best positioned to benefit from data protection. Acronis is the only company today offering a complete set of data protection solutions to enable hosters to make billions of dollars in revenue. Uh, um, and so it's good to have love, but it's also good to make money and grow. 
Now, that's it. But there is one more thing which I wanted to talk about. I'm proud to announce that uh, we um, uh, have been able to convince Host Europe Group uh, to be uh, our partner, premier partner in Europe. Host Europe is a host of this event. I just want to remind you about the company. It's founded in 97. It's number four in the world in hosting. It's number two in Europe, but it's moving up. It's sort of a pure hoster. All of these people on the picture, I know them for many, many years. I think I met uh, Jochen and Thomas, who organized the show, and Soren in 2002 for the first time. And, and you know, Patrick, I believe, also 2002 or maybe 2003. And, and you know, it's a sizable company today, 1.7 million customers, uh, 1,000 employees, three main data centers, 60,000 physical servers, 100,000 virtual servers. And so business model number five is to become partner of Host Europe. They just made it available uh, online today. It's the first service. And I wanted to invite the CEO of Mass Hosting for Host Europe Group, Andreas Palm, to talk about why he chose Acronis. Andreas, please, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. I'm very happy to announce that partnership today. And uh, actually, it was an easy choice to pick a Cronus. We, we scanned the market, and we found out these guys really know hosting. They do know about hosting. They've been doing this for 15 years. They know what hosters need. And they do know what we need in order to be successful and open up new revenue streams. As Sergey said, we'd, we're planning to launch the solutions across our group. So whole HEG will have backup as a service and data protection by Acronis. We just went live at Domain Factory yesterday, and we're looking forward to do great things with a flexible partner that has great development power. And if you need a partner to work with you on offering hosting solutions with backup as a service to your customers, talk to me, talk to Sergey. Happy to partner with you. Thanks, Sergey. Thank you, Andreas. Well, uh, that's actually it. Acronis, new generation data production, easy, complete, and safe, powered by Acronis. Follow Acronis Twitter. Follow my Twitter if you want to read Russian from time to time. I kind of speak both languages. Be crazy about Acronis. I made a tattoo. It's a permanent tattoo on myself. I'm really committed to Acronis. Uh, I, I, I would welcome any of you making tattoos uh, on, you know, on any part of your body. Don't be too aggressive. And otherwise, launch hybrid bus. You can do it today. You can start making money today through your customer base. Study Acronis Dras. It's more a high-end service. Uh, you go to Acronis Booth and look at it. Look at Acronis Access Cloud. We're going to launch it sometime this year. And launch Host Europe Group announcement and become their partner. Thank you. Thanks, Sergey.